Well, hello there. Thank you so much for tuning in today. This is Pastor Tim. And um, I would imagine that the first set of letters in the theme for today, WWJD, uh, seems obvious. They are, um, for the most part, uh, part of the lexicon of the Christian faith at this stage. Um, the what would Jesus do? And so it was the second set that some folks really struggle with. They're like, H, W, I, this doesn't, like, they, they uh, you know, they, they, they search for, but maybe can't find um, that answer. And so I wanted to um, let you know that ultimately that is the answer. What would Jesus do? And the answer is, he would love first. He would love first. That's a rather um, difficult hurdle at times. It's one of the most difficult hurdles we, we get at the very beginning of the church. Oftentimes folks will say to me, oh, you know, when I get started at my new appointment, when I get started at the, my, the, the next church, um, when I have my, my church plant, um, the number one priority is to have it be like the book of Acts, right? And as if that is some uh, place that um, the perfect church, uh, everyone's getting along, everyone's of one mind, everyone is uh, in agreement that uh, that is how uh, a church gathered people for Christ is supposed to exist. And um, I almost uh, can't control my laughter. Um, already 15 chapters in, right, in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 15, verses 22 to 31, we begin to hear the story of the fact that um, there are those who believe that new arrivals to the church have to follow the old rules. That um, For a, 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 lack of, a lack of a better sense that you're either with us or you're not with us or against us and being with us requires you to follow all the old all the old things that didn't seem to work right and so in 15 we hear the apostles and the presbyters in agreement with the whole church decide to choose representatives right and so they send this uh, letter right uh, to them delivered by the apostles and it says the apostles and the presbyters your brothers to uh, your brothers to the brothers in Antioch Syria Cilicia of Gentile origin, greeting. So they're talking to the folks who are new to the church. Um, Since we have heard that some of our numbers who went out without any mandate for us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them with Barnabas and Paul, who you know already, in the name of the Lord. We are sending them who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. Simple, clear, concise. Now, there's a whole lot going on in there that I don't want to get too far into the weeds today. However, the message is abundantly clear. The f- new uh, Christians have been told that they need to follow so many of the uh, deep and fulsome, if you would, rules and regulations of what it means to be Jewish, um, including circumcision. And that is, this was this whole topic of, you know, over and over again, rules and regulations, um, expectations that the average Jewish person in the conversations that they had in Jerusalem um, kept them from a life with with God. Over and over again, they found um, reasons that they could not uh, participate in temple or synagogue um, that uh, precluded them, kept them out of the everyday life of gathering for God. And finally, they make this decision to stop with all this orthodoxy, to stop with all this, these hurdles that must be uh, jumped over, if you would. So in essence, from the very beginning, the church struggled with what they believed to be 
the orthodoxy, the commandments by which they are called to live with Christ. And that is what's super important in today's message, is that ultimately, what would Jesus do? And we hear in the gospel right away that this is what Jesus would do. That's why it's he would love first. In chapter 15 of, of, of the Gospel of St. John, verses 12 to 17, we hear these words. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So I want to stop there because that's important. Because the first commandment, love one another. The only commandment, love one another. And by laying down our lives for our friends, now we see that as sacrifice of the human condition, but it, of a human being, but it's also the sacrifice of the human condition. What he's saying is that all these rules that we keep, all these certitudes, all these policies, all these expectations that make you in or out, stop, lay them down. They are not your life. Lay down the life of um, the special, um, what you can and what you can't eat. Lay down your life, lay down the life of that which um, keeps you from deeply expressing your relationship with God. Lay down the, the life of, um, you know, here's what you can eat, what you can't eat, here's what you have to do, what you don't have to do. I'm giving you just this one thing, to love one another. And that, that's the first thing that Jesus wants. And maybe it's the only thing that Jesus wants. Because in loving each other, we serve each other. In loving each other, we put ourselves, we put down those things that we think are life and pick up the things that really are life. And comfort and care, consideration, a depth of love, a depth of knowing, a depth of being a part of something, an end to our own personal narcissism and the beginning of a life that's beautiful and rich, and complete. He continues with this. He says, I no longer call you um, slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friend because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. And this is important and because there's not very much that you see about the, the apostles or the disciples being called slaves. But certainly he, the, the sense that they were um, students of his, that he was a master to them, he takes that away. He puts them on an even playing field because that's what we do with love. When we think of our spouses, when we think of our children, when we think of um, those whom we are appointed to care for, those that we have been um, allowed to care for, by, uh, by loving them, we give them a human equality. By loving them, we say that I love you as much as I love myself. I love you so very, very much that I'm willing to swap out all that I thought was important and replace it with love. And so this day, whatever the question of what would Jesus do comes up, I pray that you know the answer that he would love first. Because that's exactly what he does for each and every one of us. When we talk about salvation in the Lord, we talk about forgiveness. We talk about mercy. We talk about reconciliation. These, these are the stepping stones by which we come to the open space of being saved with salvation, of knowing God's never-ending love. The abundance and generosity of love. This real sense that um, we are forgiven, that we are no longer lost, that we are found, that we are broken, brought into this, um, this meaningful relationship with God. We hear the commandment, we accept the commandment. We are loved and we do love. 
in my ask you to go forth this day with that on your hearts. I pray this day that in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the hardship, in the midst of um, all the things that make us and everyone else feel that they are on the outside, you are welcomed in. And you are welcomed in with knowing these two important truths. That God loves you. And so do I. And that you go forth this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.